I've been using my Google Pixel 6a for just under two months now and I thought it would be a perfect time to make a what's on my phone video and just share my overall experience with the phone so far. Hi guys, it's Magali. If it's your first time on my channel, then welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I make fairly regular videos on beauty, fashion, travel, lifestyle, as well as food and even tech. If you enjoy this type of content, please take a minute to hit the red subscribe button below this video and subscribe to my channel so that you never miss out on new content. I've been a Google Pixel user for a few years now. When Google announced that the Pixel 6a was launching here, I was really excited. When this phone went on sale on Flipkart, I pre-ordered. It. I even made a little unboxing video, I'm going to link it over there. And this is my second what's on my Pixel video because I did make one about two years ago with my previous phone, the Pixel 4a. I usually just change my phones every two years and it's what works for me. Now we're going to quickly cover my history with smartphones so you know where I'm coming from. Then I'll tell you about my experience using this phone and the features that I really like, why I upgraded and what I use the most often. And then of course I will show you guys my home screen and stuff you'll be able to see all of my favorite apps as well as how I organize them if you want to jump to any specific section I always have chapters or timestamps on my video uh, so feel free to do that for my team pixel days I was an iPhone only person and before that I had a Blackberry and before that I had several Nokia phones <laughs> I started using iPhones with the iPhone 4 then I had the 5 6 plus and the 7 that was my last iPhone and then I moved on to the Pixel range. When I was using the iPhone 7, I remember hearing all of the hype about Pixel and their amazing cameras. So I actually bought the Pixel 2 but I gifted it to my mom because I was not ready to switch from iOS to Android yet. And I used to borrow it all the time just so that I could take photos with it. So once I did that for a few months, I was absolutely sold and knew that I was ready to switch from iPhone to Pixel, this is absolutely the best experience that you can get on an Android. This is my third Pixel but the fifth Pixel we've had in my household because my mom is also a Pixel user and we've just had a really really great experience with this entire range. And the camera remains one of the best features of this phone. Oh, my Pixel 4a was still working pretty well but there were a few tempting features of the 6a that made me really want to switch. One of the main things was the Tensor chip. It's Google's flagship chip. I also wanted to switch because this back camera has like two cameras. You also have a wide angle one and I love shooting wide angle. I was missing a wide angle lens on my phone because my 3XL had a wide angle front camera. The reason that I love wide angle so much is just because you get so much into the scene and I think uh, you can make really interesting photo and video with it. I even took this phone on holiday recently I got to test it out in Goa and I really enjoyed the experience a few of the times I was even vlogging on my phone and another one of the features that I think is so great is something that you've probably seen in the Google Ads a lot it's called magic eraser but we were in the train on the way to Goa when I first decided to test out this feature we wanted to take some cute pictures uh, there were these people in the background of the photo which was super annoying that's when I decided to test the feature out and they're actually already suggesting the background people to remove so I'm just gonna tap them and they will disappear and they didn't actually remove one girl the first time we saw this feature in action, we literally screamed because it's a very, very intelligent feature. That's also another thing I love about Pixel, that the camera is always really intelligent and it gets the best color, it gets the most lifelike photo. So if you are a creator or if you just like taking good photo or video, then the Pixel is an amazing range for that. Let's quickly talk about my phone case because I know you guys are going to ask. So if you saw my unboxing video, I had the same case on since then pretty much. It's this dark green case that I really like and this is how it looks after almost two months of use. I think it's still in pretty good condition considering that I am not the most delicate with my things. But I wanted to give my phone 
phone a little makeover. So I decided to switch cases up and I wanted something a little bit whimsical, a little more girly. So I got this transparent case with daisies on it which is so cute. I have linked all of the cases in the description bar below. And I even added a little phone chain. I used to have these on my Nokia phone when I was in high school. I even had one of these phone chains that lit up, it had LEDs in it and the LEDs would start flashing whenever anyone was trying to call me. This brought back a lot of nostalgia. Not only is it cute, it's super functional because you can put this around your wrist and it gives you added security. I'm frequently using my camera when I'm at the back of like a scooter or a motorbike or something and I'm always nervous that I'm gonna drop my phone in traffic. That's why having a strap is and gives me peace of mind. I know that these transparent cases go but Spigen fairly good brand so I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I don't think it will happen soon. It will take its time. And then I decided to change the home screen also. I had put this really cool tiger wallpaper and I liked it but I wanted now to make things more floral. My lock screen was already floral. I picked out this wallpaper. This is one of the pre-installed ones that comes with the pixel and I positioned it and it's this green girl oh, with a bunny rabbit and a lot of flowers. I think it looks lovely. Now let's actually look on my phone and I'm going to check you through my app. So first let's go over like the bottom shelf thingy. I have my Gmail, WhatsApp, camera, Spotify and Google Chrome browser. Uh, these are probably some of my most used apps so I wanted to have them at hand. Now we'll get into the folders on my home screen. Initially I used to label these folders with emojis. After a point I realized that was a little stupid. So now I have written folder names. The first folder is called health. I have just two apps here. First is Google Fit which I can jack my daily steps and now you guys can see that I have been so inactive for the month of September. August was a little bit better. I am trying to be more active on a consistent basis and failing at it. Second app in here is Clue. This is a period tracking app. It tracks your menstrual cycle. You can see patterns in your cycle and it actually predicts when your next one will come and gives you a lot of great data. It's free to use but you can get a paid subscription. They don't sell your data. They take privacy really seriously so I love them. I've been using Clue for many many years now. Then the next folder says money. In here I have Google Pay which is my preferred UPI app. I recently saw that Google Pay actually turned 5 because it's become my favorite way to pay. I am someone who does not like having cash on me often. So UPI is just an easy way to make digital payments and now pretty much all the vendors accept it. Not just shops but even street vendors like a Bajiwala or a guy selling snacks on the road accepts GPA and it makes things super convenient. A good few like banking apps which boring but you need them to track your finances. You know I'm trying to be adult and stuff. Wow where did the sun go? Let's not get distracted. So I have my standard chartered bank app, my iMobile pay app for ICICI bank, Slice card app and my fee app. Slice is something like a credit card. I used to be really excited about it earlier. Now I'm like, huh, it's okay. There's also a fee app. Now fee is also like a new bank kind of thing for millennials and younger people who don't like going to bank. So it is a proper safe bank account but everything happens virtually in the app which is beautifully designed. And then I have Cred which is an app that helps you pay your credit card bill. And finally I have an app for my electricity company. It just notifies me when I have a new electricity bill and I can pay it. Now we go on to the next folder which says work. So first I have Shopify and Shopify inbox because I'm a small business owner. My business is called Studio Bahia and it is just about to have another draw. So you can visit the website and sign up for the email list if you'd like to know when that happens. Shopify inbox is basically a way that any customer who's on Studio Bahia has any questions, they can get in touch with me and I can respond and help them sort out whatever queries they may have. Then I have WordPress app because I have a blog before YouTube, before Twitter and Instagram and other social media. I was a blogger first. WordPress just helps me edit my blog on the go. I don't actually use it on my phone a lot but you never know when you might need it. Sometimes I'm stuck outside home and need to make an edit urgently. It happens or I'm on holiday and I haven't carried a computer. That's when having these apps on your phone 
are really handy. My Google Analytics and Google AdSense app analytics just helps me make sense of like my website traffic and AdSense is an app that you can earn from ads on your blog and I also earn from this YouTube channel. Then there's also some other utilities that are helpful for me as a creator. There's Bitly and Magic Links. Both of them shorten links so I can easily tweet them out or put them on my Instagram stories. Handy to have these. And I have Notion. But it's this really great organizing app that's actually excellent. I remember I think at the start of last year, I decided that I was going to be super organized and I started like a Notion board for my videos and all of that. I don't use it as actively, I totally fell off but I still use it to keep track of some things that are important to me. I note down my favorites and some other things here and they help me make sense of my head which often feels very jumbled you know. It's like very chaotic in here. Final work app is called Imaging Edge and that is just basically for my Sony camera. I really love my camera which I've been using for a few years now but it does not have a flip screen. This app helps use my phone as a screen. Today since I knew I'm doing a watch on my phone, I'm using my iPad as a screen. You can also take photos and control all of the settings. It's quite a useful app although it sometimes misbehaves. Now we're gonna move on to the social folder. So there's Twitter, Instagram, YouTube which I can skip over. Between the two of them, they probably take up a majority of my screen time. Then there's also YouTube Studio. It's a useful app to have on your phone if you are a YouTube creator. So it helps me look at all of the back end details of my channel. There's a cool feature called Real Time that lets me see which videos are getting the most views in the last 48 hours as well as in the last 60 minutes and it helps me make some edits as well not to the video itself but if I need to change the title or the description that is something that I can do. I also have Letterboxd. I do not use this app as much as I like but this is kind of a simple social networking app. The profile where you can share any movies that you watched recently and you can share your own rating of them as well as a review if you'd like to and I definitely do not update this uh, when I watch movies I need to make it a habit but at the top of my profile you will see my top four movies which are Zoolander, The Princess Bride, Labyrinth and Jani Bido Yaro. These are my all-time favorites and I have seen them too many times to count. If you guys have a letterbox account, I am Magali C there. So please do add me because these apps are less fun when you don't actually have friends on there. <laughs> I also have Discord which is a really great chat app. Gamers use it a lot. I also have membership on my channels. So if you are a member on this channel or on my blog channel, we have our own little Discord channel thingy going on. Although I haven't been very active there, but I should start being active. I also have an Audible account. I've talked about this before, but I really love listening to audiobooks. I do not think they're in competition of physical books and they help me uh, be entertained or gain knowledge when I'm doing like a repetitive or boring task. I haven't actually listened to anything on Audible for a while. I have listened to some of these books completely and I don't mind listening to some of them again. Although I bought some of them a little while ago and now when I think of it, they are a little bit embarrassing. But some of them are still fantastic and I would re-listen to them. I've been wanting to make a video on my favorite audiobooks for a while because I had done one blog post many years ago that time Audible was not even in India and the membership used to be really expensive but ever since they came to India it's actually really affordable to join Audible and I should start working on that video. I find myself listening to like celebrity memoirs a lot. I know it sounds really vapid but if I enjoy a celebrity's personality uh, then I sometimes enjoy hearing their life story or listening to what they have to say and one of my most recent books that I bought but haven't actually listened to yet is called I'm Glad My Mom Died. It's by Jeanette McCurdy and I believe she was on this TV show called iCarly. I've never seen the TV show uh, but I've heard that the memoir is really good. When it released it just sold out everywhere. The title seems a little bit provocative but with context you will understand the meaning. I haven't really started on it but I'm excited to do so. On to the next folder which I call photo video folder. This has editing apps and stuff. So first you just see photos which is where 
all of my photo albums are and I really love Google Photos. I think it is definitely superior to like iOS and iPad OS's photos folder. And there's also Visco which is uh, how I like to edit most of my pictures. So I do really subtle edits uh, but I just like adding a filter to it and I'll sometimes add a little bit grain. Uh, my recent favorite filter is the WWF filter and doesn't this doggy look so cute you guys? This is Tejas. Hi Tejas. And um, these are just basically pictures from the Goa trip that I was editing. Ah, oh, I love this one. Oh. <laughs> these are just friends that I made in Goa whom I love a lot and also a mirror selfie. I've used Visco forever and I will probably continue to use it also. I like that it's really subtle and the effects that it gives are similar to like film grain but it doesn't really um, smooth skin or do anything like that. It is just beautiful. Fuji is a cute app and it basically simulates olden days disposable cameras that had dates on them. You can either take photos within the app itself or you can import your photos in here and it makes it look like you took a picture with a disposable camera kind of. You can also choose to put a real date on it or a fake date on it. The look is a little harsh so it's not for everybody but I do enjoy using it every once in a while. I have Snapseed which I use very rarely. I used to use this to take out like distractions from backgrounds but now that Google Photos itself does it with Magic Eraser, I doubt I'll use Snapseed much anymore. It is really a powerful app. I also have Photoshop Express and Lightroom. So Lightroom is a very very powerful app, it's probably like the most powerful editing that you can do on your phone. But again, I don't really edit my pictures that much, so I don't use it a lot. I often have my camera take pictures on RAW as well, because they capture more data and they look dull at first. But if you put them in an app like Lightroom, you'll actually get more detail in the photo than you would get with just a JPEG. This is how a picture of a nighttime landscape looked in RAW. Um, you can see that it's a little dull but I made some really minor adjustments and I got some more detail out of the sky. Many of the features on this app are free and some of them are paid features only that if you have a creative cloud membership from Adobe then you can use them. I used to have a creative cloud membership for two or three years. It's pretty expensive and I recently cancelled my membership because I figured I do not use it enough to justify paying that amount on a monthly basis. Last few apps are Rare Vision, Rush and Adobe Photoshop Mix. Rare Vision is a really cool app that I used to be obsessed with and it helps you take these videos that look like old VHS videos and they make things look a little crappy but in a cool way and there are a lot of things that you can change. You can add some filters. Rush is another app by Adobe from their creative cloud. I haven't even signed into this one. It might be useful to do video editing. Even when I film on my phone, most of the time I try to edit on my computer because I'm more comfortable there. But if you edit a lot on your phone and post from your phone itself, then Rush might be a good app to check out. And Adobe Photoshop Mix is like a simple version of Photoshop that just helps you collages and combine things <laughs> like uh, it had a very noisy background and I just wanted to get like myself and delete the background I put this image on top of something else the next folder is called talk and I just have a phone app true caller app and messaging app these are pretty much my least used apps because I really really hate phone calls and I prefer to communicate more on WhatsApp. If I could, I would delete my phone app off of my phone for real. But since I can't do that, I just stick them in this folder. The next folder says shop on it and it basically has a lot of e-commerce apps. There's Amazon of course because I shop on Amazon too much. Flipkart because sometimes you need stuff from Flipkart so it is my second choice. Geomart, um, sometimes good for groceries and stuff. Tata New, the big basket app now lives inside this and another great app for groceries and H&M is pretty much my only fashion app on here uh, because browsing from H&M and then making a cheeky little order that's like my guilty pleasure. The next app says 
food etc so this is basically like food as well as some travel apps i have zomato swiggy mac delivery and kfc all four food apps that need no further explanation my google maps is also in here then i have uber and ola that help me get from place to place in mumbai and i have borzo this used to be called wefast which was a much better name i don't know why they changed it to borzo it's a great way to um, send parcels within the city itself but sometimes you want to send food or something delicate you can just hand it to a guy and then he take it to wherever in the pandemic and the worst of it during the lockdowns i sent some stuff to friends friends sent some stuff to me and uh, it was a way for people to feel closer during that time when we were still not going out and socializing i moved on to the second page of my home screen there's one very important folder which is my gaming and let me just move this that looks better i did not want to block her face i like gaming on my phone and i have a lot of games as you can see first is just google's own play games app google now has this thing on the play store known as the play pass apple has something similar called apple arcade it's basically like a monthly subscription to games but the apple arcade one works a little differently than google play pass i fully believe in supporting game developers so sometimes games google play pass is like very very affordable i believe it's 100 rupees a month and then you get access to all of these premium games that you would otherwise have to buy and sometimes a game is free but then to play levels inside or to play as different characters you need to make in app purchases uh, so often all of the in app purchases also are free when you have play pass i freaking love play pass and yeah, i recently switched to a yearly subscription i also game on my computer so i usually use steam Many of these games I also own on my computer. I paid for them there as well. I have a mini metro. It's this really beautiful minimalistic puzzle and it is so well designed. I've actually cleared most of these levels before many different cities that you can play. There's even a map of Mumbai. Weirdly enough, it only seems to cover South Mumbai. I have Stardew Valley and Terraria. These are also games that I own on my computer. These are significantly more immersive than Mini Metro. You can play short bursts of Mini Metro, so, but Stardew Valley and Terraria require you to actually be like into it. Game Dev Tycoon, there's this one simulation game where I kind of own a ramen shop. Strange but cute app. I have not fully understood it. I guess I'm like a farmer here. Polytopia, this is a strategy game that I play a lot of. I have a game running right now. There's also Hold Down, Pocket City, a lot of the Kingdom Rush games. Kingdom Rush, Kingdom Rush Vengeance, Kingdom Rush Origins, and Kingdom Rush Frontiers. I have a soft spot for games that are retro looking. So here's this game called Cat Super Tales 2. It combines retro games that I love along with a cat character. After the gaming folder, I have another one called Music. And I would have my Spotify in here, except that my Spotify is on the lower bar i have it now playing here this is a really cool feature that pixels have it's any music playing in a tv show or a movie it will recognize that it's kind of like shazam but it does it automatically in the background this is like a history of all the songs that have been playing if i want to download any of them it just is a very handy feature and i also have year one app because i have nothing earphones which i love by the way so this is the companion app for that it helps me control the earphone that's pretty much everything that's on my phone i mean there are some other apps maybe that i haven't really added to those folders the ones that i really need i definitely added two folders so i hope you guys enjoyed this little glimpse and if you have any questions that you think i can answer feel free to leave them in the comment box below thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next time